Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Sit back, relax, and grab a fucking drink. Uh, welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. We got a big boy show today. Big boy show today. We got Jesse Bright on the show. How are you, Jesse? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Man, I am right as rain. Uh, sounds like there's some construction in Wilmington, North Carolina again. Yeah. Uh, that town is growing. Uh, yeah, growing. Is that what it is? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Fucking clowns. Uh, if you don't know who Jesse Bright is, he was the gentleman who filmed himself while getting pulled over. Um, you are an attorney, correct? Yeah, I am. You are. Uh, you, you look young to be an attorney. How old are you? Uh, 33. Not so young. Okay. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yes. Maybe Maybe it's the Zoom. I look like I'm a, a prisoner somewhere in Afghanistan on this goddamn thing. <laughs> but uh, you look right as rain today. Um, a couple years ago, you had a video that went viral um, in which you filmed yourself getting pulled over by the Wilmington police. Um, can you describe what happened in that video? Because uh, when I watched it, I, I was unaware of the circumstances of what led up to you getting pulled over. Yeah, so uh, I drive Uber on the weekends, and uh, this was like a Sunday afternoon. I picked a guy up from a house that was being watched by like a Wilmington task force. And uh, I didn't know that, and he didn't know that, but they were uh, looking for some, I guess, mid-level drug dealer. And this guy like fit the description, but it wasn't him. So once I picked him up, they thought that was the guy and they pulled me over a couple blocks later and uh, like five cop cars all at once pulled me over and they're like, you know, yelling at us to put our hands out the window and they came and like pulled my passenger out of the car. But uh, then I could tell that they were there for my passenger. So I started filming and uh, one of the officers told me I had to stop filming because it's against the law. But uh, he didn't realize that I was an attorney and I know that's bogus. So I just kept filming and uh, told him that that's not the law. And then... Uh, I put that on. What, I, what was the what was the race of this gentleman that was with you? He was white. He was white. Yeah, um, yeah. My passenger was white, and I think all the uh, cops at the scene were white. Was very, okay. Yeah. And and what was what was he wanted for exactly? You said drugs. Like any was it good shit or was it like heroin? Um, I, I have no idea. I would assume something more than weed. So probably like coke or heroin or. Yeah, but is, is coke a drug? A lot of people would argue probably no. You know, on that one? No, I, I, don't, every, I don't think anybody argues everyone that coke's agrees not a drug. cocaine's a drug, I yeah. think. Really? Unless, no, we just don't care that it's illegal. It's that's, one of those, that's where you're getting fucked up. It's like a socially acceptable drug, more so than heroin or meth. But Yeah, because coke you can party on and have a, a decent time. Heroin, it's, it's a lot of nirvana. and then Yeah, but coke uh, addiction you know. can still kill you for sure. Look, Could it really? Yeah. Addiction to fucking fast food can kill you. Yeah, but I mean, you you can, you can definitely take enough coke and die. Like your heart will stop. Yeah, but look, that's uh, what do you so. call that? <laughs> Natural selection is what that's yes. called. Um, yes. Look, I've been doing drugs for years and have not died once. I think it's like arrhythmia <laughs> or something. Natural selection, arrhythmia, same thing, really. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but that's natural <laughs> selection. Look, if you choose to take part in activities that are dangerous, sometimes you're going to die. Um, and if you're uh, if you've got a proclivity towards addiction or you have a weak heart, it's kind of like COVID. If you're young, you're probably good. Yeah, that's true. I, and I look, I have two heroes in this world, Charlie Sheen and Keith Richards. Both of them have done endless amounts of cocaine and they seem completely fine. Well, Charlie Sheen's got AIDS, but it's not ah. related to the cocaine. As a matter of fact, the cocaine's probably helping him out. Yeah, true. I mean, true. if you found out you had AIDS right now, what would you do tomorrow? Except for starting AIDS treatment, obviously you're going to be doing that. But yeah. what else would you do? I it wouldn't be cocaine, but I'm See, not you're sure. Fu you're fucked up. Yeah, uh, what would you just... do then? Would you go to Jersey Mike's and get yourself an Italian? <laughs> probably number how, thirteen original Italian. How much time meat? I got to live? I mean, some people live like forty, fifty. Oh, years you can't with die AIDS. from AIDS unless you're poor. Now you're fine, dude. Yeah, so probably just nothing different. But. Oh, come on, man. You got to take some risk. You got oh, okay. to sign up for those dating websites where there are bug chasers. Like HIV positive yeah. dating sites? There's actually, yeah, yeah. so I don't, know, I don't know if this is true for the straight community, but uh, there are websites where 
dudes that don't have HIV go look for dudes that do have HIV. They're called buck chasers. Who told us about that? Was it Milo? I don't remember who it was. I that, believe so, yeah. That yeah. sounds Milo not true. Like go out to purposely get HIV? Yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Fear of missing out on AIDS. <laughs> Hey, it happens a lot. I'll you, look into it. Surprise, Jesse. So, yeah, take a take a peek. Sees after the show. Yeah, I'm um, sure there's me, some someone with that. Leah, let me let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, as a lawyer, what were you doing driving an Uber that day? Making money. All right, but so were you not a practicing lawyer that was making a lot of money, or what was your situation? Yeah, you no. So, um, so my first, uh, well, my first like six months as an attorney, um, I was interning at the public defender's office, which pays zero. And then uh, after that, I uh, started doing um, court-appointed work, which gets paid through the state, and uh, it's it's not very high-paying. But uh, I owe like three hundred grand in student loans, and I was single, so I just drive Uber and make extra money, try to pay that down a little bit. Holy so, shit, three hundred grand! Where did you go to undergrad, and where did you go to law school? Yeah, so uh, I went to undergrad here at UNCW, and I went to okay. law school at a scam school that got shut down, but. It still counted. It's a whole different story. In they didn't itself. like give you your money back and shit. No, the school was Charlotte Law. Are you familiar with the Charlotte Law scam? I am. Yes. Yeah. So they uh, they scammed a ton of students, but um, a small percentage, like thirty percent of us, still passed the bar and are still allowed to practice law. But they shut the whole school down and give us our money back because it's government loans. No but, shit. Yeah. And but you still owe the money. Yeah, I owe the government like three hundred grand, but it's uh. I don't know. It doesn't affect my credit, so I just pay a minimum amount. I stopped trying to pay on it. <laughs> it's an abysmal amount of money. It goes up like 18K a year. Oh, God. That is depressing to hear. It'll just sit I under- there until Bernie Sanders is the president and wipes it, I guess. Well, <laughs> let's let's face it. Uh, they He had a shot twice, and the Democrats hated him enough to get rid of him two times. So uh, he's not getting back in there. He'd be, what, 84 by the night? The- the, the next election i don't know you have to cut him in half and count the rings i think to really know something like that you really just need him in office for like a month yeah it, it, it's it's not gonna happen the democrats hate the guy yeah. i don't understand to me he's probably best built for this moment right now yeah no, he um, hates them too that's why he's not friends with like any of them yeah and and i get it i mean joe biden's in a basement somewhere uh on a simon says uh <laughs> just trying to make a fucking speech to tampa bay residents but um, I understand now why you're, you're, you're doing the side hustle in the Uber. Um, how long did you end up f- filming the cops and, and tell everybody what happened? Man, I probably filmed for like almost 15 minutes. They, uh, they did all kinds of bogus stuff. They told me I couldn't record and then let me record. They, uh, they pulled my passenger out of the car, which I don't know if he ever sued for them, but they like physically grabbed him and pulled him out, even though he was just sitting there calmly and didn't really give him a chance to to just step out of the vehicle. Um, and then uh, they asked to search the vehicle, which they don't have the right to do. So I told them no. And they, uh, they brought in um, a drug sniffing dog, which uh, is trained in three different ways. They train them like one of three different ways to indicate when there's drugs. And the, uh, the dog went around my car and did not indicate. And they still, uh, they still went in the car. They still were like, the dog's real interested in your car. We're going in the car, which is bogus but it happened anyways and that uh i think that officer was reprimanded for that as well but uh so they like searched the whole car they went in through everything like pulled everything out of the glove compartment under the seats pulled the mats up like dug through the you know, i'm surprised somebody one of my passengers didn't drop some weed back there at some point but they found nothing so eventually had to let me go i drove Did my passenger you- home did you were you able to bill the officer for the dog um, being in the Uber? Because I, I would imagine that would count as another passenger. No, did not bill the. Uh, mm. I don't think the dog actually went inside. He just walked around the outside of the car. But the the officers went inside. They like pulled everything out of it, and I had to put it back in. Huge, huge pain, huge hassle, for nothing. And then they just yeah. drove off for, for nothing. And uh, what what was the end result of this? Um, did you get any form of ticket? Uh, was the guy no. arrested? Is he in no. jail? No, he didn't get arrested. I didn't get a ticket. They had to let everybody go. Um, and I just drove him home, dropped him off. I'm sure. Uh, I actually don't know who it is. It's like three years later. I've not ever reconnected with that guy to talk to him about the story. I What I assume is that he knows the person that was wanted that was at that house. 
and probably uh, got home and probably called them and told them what happened. But I, I have no idea. Uh, that, that's a crazy story. So as a lawyer, what should you do when you get pulled over by the cops? Uh, should you immediately start filming if you feel unsafe? Like what, what would be your best advice to people out there at home? Yeah. So, uh, what I advise people is kind of like a preemptive measure. You should have some kind of like dash cam or something in your car that you can swivel and point towards, uh, I don't know if you've seen the dash cams that you put up and like you can swivel around. They like film the road <clears> while you're driving. Um, mm. And the reason for that is because you're not going to get as much. The uh, the police would get kind of nervous sometimes if you're holding stuff. You know, the phone can look like a uh, a gun, especially if you're a minority and then you get shot and while you're just trying to film. But uh, if you can have some sort of dash cam or something set up where you can swivel it around to the pass- to the driver's side, film everything so that it's not just your word versus the Maybe cops. we should make a phone case that looks like a gun. To, yeah, you think that I would think help be, on I purpose, be just super easy, so that you could get shot. Then white people could also get shot by the police. Well, white people do get shot by the police at a higher rate than black people do, but uh, you know, yeah, yeah different you, topic. But it is indeed. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's not it's not reported enough, um, but the numbers are staggering. Uh, well, just because the population is bigger, obviously. But yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. we we've got some problems with policing, but you know. We've we've allowed uh, these are pretty easy ones. Like people understanding their constitutional rights are important. That's that's a big fucking deal yeah, because constitutional rights thing is important. You have yeah. a right to record everything the police do. Um, they can ask like to see your hands. So once they've established that it's a phone, you can legally keep holding the phone to record. But uh, um, like the ones that I've recorded, when the police come up, first I have the cup, the phone sitting in like a cup holder in between uh, the two seats and pointed up at the window so that it keeps recording. And then once the officer can see me, then I pick up the phone and he can see that I'm not holding a gun. But um, have have you been pulled over since? Um, I've been pulled over a couple times. I've not gotten tickets, but just pulled over for like brake light out or small stuff like that. And is, uh, your first, is your first instinct to immediately start recording them? Yeah, like always. To- I, I set up a camera to start recording while I'm sitting there waiting for them to, you know, there's that like one minute that feels like 15 minutes when you got pulled over, but they haven't walked to the car yet. And I just uh, have a phone sitting there recording so that I get everything as soon as he walks up. So uh, there's it, a lot of there. They, uh, they tell you the reason that they pulled you over. And then if that say you end up going to trial and just that very first interaction with, do you know why I pulled you over? And they say it. And then they try to say that they pulled you over for something else in court. You know, it's, they just perjured themselves on the stand. I don't know. You can gotcha. get all kinds and, of stuff and, from that. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's strange because the, the times we live in, I think everybody's doing this type of thing right now. Um, do you think eventually there'll be cameras that are just built into the dash with the cars that are being made? Mm. Yeah, for sure. I think there should be. Well, and um, I mean, it's very rare to see a car in Russia, for example, that doesn't, that doesn't have, have, a, dash have a dash cam. I don't know why. Maybe because Russian police are corrupt. It's hard to say, man. The uh, the insurance companies in some foreign countries will give you, uh, they give you discounts on your insurance to have hmm. cameras installed that they have access to so that they, it cuts down on any of the issues when there's a car accident. They know exactly who's at fault. They can see your speed and all that. I don't think I'd want that, but. I think everybody should have a built-in camera in their car so that you've got your own evidence for when something happens. You know, God forbid you're driving and getting a getting a collision where someone runs a red light and it's just your word versus theirs, mm-hmm. and now you're paying a huge insurance deductible because they say you ran the red light and both yeah. insurances make you pay for yourself. So, that's that's interesting. I, I I never thought about that actually. Dash cams are like eighty dollars. Could save you thousands. It's a terrific investment. No shit. <laughs> I, uh, my dash cam just like a couple, uh, months ago caught a car wreck sitting on a third and market street. And uh, I put that video on YouTube and, uh, viral hogs offered to buy it from me. And I've made like a few hundred off of that. So just record everything. You don't know what you're going to catch. Well, cut like 60 or 70,000 more of those and you'll be able to pay off your student loans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now what you should do is, uh, pay two people to fuck in front of your car and mm-hmm. then drive up to them and record all of that. Now you're now you're talking some real cash. Yeah. Because now you're starting to get into a kink. Um, and there is a kink of having a car pull up and then watching you blast out uh, your, your lady, you know? Or dude. We <laughs> either way. We, we don't care. Yeah, we don't discriminate. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you probably make more money off gay porn these days than you do off straight porn. 
You're talking like in in public, just like out on like third in market, just oh yeah, banging that's in the bit, street and have someone. That's a big one on on Pornhub. So if you go there, uh, some of the, <laughs> the one of the one of the biggest subgroups is um, dresser room. So people are eating e either eating each other out, uh, masturbating, or fucking in dressing rooms of like a Target um, or a Walmart and things like that. And that's become a huge subgroup on Pornhub. There was a, a movie in the '90s that was um, Crash. Crash. There it is. Yeah. Um, that was people, about people. Yeah. Like people that get aroused by car wrecks. It was semi pornographic, but it was more like a documentary style thing. How, how is a car wreck? Even slightly pornographic. Kink shaming. Get him out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, hey, don't, don't shame, dude. We don't like kink shame. You don't question people, okay? As long as everybody's consenting, we just let let it slide. And we videotape it and take it home and masturbate to it. Fair Wait, yeah. uh, no, no, no. That's not, that's not what I do. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. No but that's the that's that's uh an honest truth like people who get in car accidents and then they they bang right afterwards like that's a big kink i i've never heard that it's uh i look up everything i'll be checking all this and i'll send it in like oh do you so like what's the weirdest thing you've perused on porn then uh cause my wife no no i just what? met google stuff like in general but oh oh i thought you were talking Pornhub, like you're an avid porn hub guy because my, my wife was scat porn. She introduced me to that, and I had no idea what that was. No, I'm more of an ex-hamster person anyways. But um, we were talking just like strangest uh, like porn searches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've all been down rabbit holes. Man, I, I don't know. I feel like no matter what you type in, you get stepbrother, stepmom, step something. I agree 100%. Up, yes. You, my, my favorite is, uh, and this is the reason I actually have a whiteboard in my house, is the ones where it's like a – like two stepsisters and a step aunt or something like that. Like how, mm -hmm. who's related to whom here? And then like, and then, then there's the ones, um, God, I can't remember what it's called, but I, somebody sent me a clip on, uh, not a clip, but a, a meme of it from, um, on Instagram the other day. What's it called? Um, daughter swap. And the, ah. the general premise is two dads <laughs> who have daughters meet up and like, hey, why don't we fuck each other's daughter? Because that happens all the time in real life. I see. Uh, sure. They like get in a car wreck and they're like, hey, let's just trade our daughters instead well, of dealing yeah. with this car wreck. Yeah, I mean, wreck. it's stuff like that. It's like, yeah. oh, our daughters are going off to college. We better f make sure they get fucked before they go to college so they know what a real dick's like. Well, I can't fuck my daughter. Well, you can fuck yeah. mine and I'll fuck yours. And that's kind of how it goes. And then uh, usually uh, they forget at some point during the scene that they're related mm -hmm related yeah. and the dad like fucking blasts on his daughter's face or some shit yeah. you know what i mean it's like it's so i have the whiteboard out drawing diagrams trying to figure out who's who do you think there's yeah, established you, like porn research on this like that people have established that uh it's more erotic and enjoyable to the viewer maybe. if they tell us that the people are like related i don't know but i'm trying to get yeah. werner uh herzog to do a documentary on it. i just really <laughs> like his voice you know what i mean yeah, I think the next step is getting uh, a 23 and me done and then posting that like, you know, right in front of the camera before you bang so that way yeah. you know that we're really actually... related. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then fucking... I found a new one last night that I, I had never heard of. Um, sunburn porn um, where the where both the, the people were porn. sunburned. Yeah. Um, and so you could see how sunburned they were while they were banging. And I didn't mm. know that was a thing. that seems like a lot of work. Like you got to go out and get a sunburn. Come on, man. Well, they went into a backstory that they were on a boating trip for the day, and uh, then they took off their clothes, and both were actually sunburned. So, you know, it, it was the real deal, and I was proud of it. Homegirl had red hair, so I'm, I'm assuming she probably didn't have to sit on the boat very long, but, uh, but the other guy was very burned. And then, uh, you know, I watched them bone for a little bit. And are, are, they like, are they like slapping each other's sunburn? or what, how, how does the sunburn come into it aside from them just having super red skin? I'm glad you brought that up. So, because I, I, I was thinking that as well. This is not the show you thought you were coming on, by the way, is it? No, no, I knew. Drew, let me know that. Oh, okay, uh, good. You guys can't get monetized because of this. Yeah, because of uh, how uncensored it is. So, I was like, yeah, I, yeah. I figured as much. I, uh, it is I hope you guys are at least checking that little YouTube box that says like this show is in no way suitable for children. Type. We thing. always do. You, we yeah. always do. It's an important yeah, box to check. I mean, that's but, really up to the parents, not us. Yeah, exactly. It's just being a good. Dad. I don't know that sunburn porn is as inappropriate as some of the other types, but it's. I've got a question. This is you know. this is not going to go well. Are we ready for this? Go ahead. This away. is not going to go well. I was talking to somebody about this last night, mm -hmm. um, and it's. I'm not making any judgments or political statements 
nothing. I'm on no side of this. I'm just making some f- statements of fact. You guys ready? Yeah. So the the people that we typically refer to as heroes, like the founding fathers of this country, that's that's a group of people that the vast majority of people look up to and respect. Um, sure. The people that made the original laws for this country, right? Right. Founding fathers. They found it was okay to marry and impregnate 13-year-olds. Yep. Ah. Right? Uh huh. And we yeah. still, yeah, yeah, yeah. we still, fought, we still hold them in very high esteem. Somebody explain that to me. Yeah, I mean, they did all kinds of ridiculous things that you wouldn't, uh, most of the founding fathers could not hold office today. None of them could. Yeah. Zero, no. per, zero percent of them. Like, I'm pretty sure you can't get elected if you own p- human beings. Yeah, um, that's one of them, for if, sure. If you're in severe debt, which most of our founding fathers were also, like uh, when Thomas Jefferson died, Monticello was upside down like 3,000% or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, but forget about all that. I'm talking about this specific issue. This is, this is very creepy and weird. The, like marrying 13-year-olds. Yes, and, and this was not very long ago, folks. It wasn't very long ago that this was happening. I'm just curious... I was having a discussion about um, like monogamy, I think, and why we decided as a culture that that's the right way to go. I think it's mm-hmm. because the nuclear family has, there's like statistical evidence that shows that's good for people. But I don't, I th- th- that statistical evidence came way after we decided that the nuclear family was a good idea, right? So how did that happen? How did we decide that 18 was the age? Like, I'm curious about that because 13 is certainly not it. And I don't think, like, I've, I've heard some of these, uh, I don't know if I want to call them apologists, but they've said things like, well, 13 was different back then. No, no, it wasn't. So it's, it's 16 in North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, it was, really? Yeah it, yeah. Was, yeah. it was 14 in South Carolina and uh, Mississippi until relatively recently. Yeah. North Carolina age of consent is 16. As yeah. soon as you're 16, you can consent to being with a 90-year-old if you want. Yeah. It's completely legal. Wow. I'm, su- I'm surprised Chris D'Elia didn't live in North Carolina then. Yeah. He should have moved in any of these problems um, right now. Um, but yeah, um, I, I, no, my, I just really like making people feel uncomfortable. That's what I've done here. And I feel like I've done a pretty good job of it. So we can move on now. Yeah, we can. Um, by the way, back to the sunburn <laughs> porn guy. Um, <laughs> they never referenced it, the sunburn. So it was just it was just a lot of like um, groaning through the sunburn. But uh, they never referenced it. Um, and... That's what they do with quarantine porn now. They, half yes. of the stuff labeled is like, this is quarantine porn. We slept with my friend because we're in quarantine, but they don't talk about being quarantined because it's probably you reused material. They just change the title on. Mm-hmm. They never reference it. They're not like, hey, we have COVID. <clears throat> Let's- yeah, it's just search engine yeah. optimization. That's all it is. They're just retitling things to get more clicks, right? But Pretty it's much. weird to me that you would go to the trouble. Like, quarantine is easy. That's just a narrative you can drop on any video. But... um sunburn you actually have to go out and prepare for that by getting skin cancer like that seems like a fucking long way to go to make some pornography and who like there can't be enough people that are in the sunburn porn to make that financially worthwhile you don't think that they just found a couple people that were already sunburned and then like hey let's no. shoot this and see if it's a fetish no because i'll go po- i'll go further with this it was a couple and they have their own channel on Pornhub, and and most of their porn is is sunburn porn and they're amateurs and they're monetizing it themselves and uh it's kind of become their thing so like as the videos progressed they were having sex outdoors like so you can see them getting the sunburn so it wasn't like later uh you know and that's part of the whole process too i would hope it'd be like a spray tan thing where they use red instead of brown well that's like that. racist though you can't but go brown they're... brown face or red face or black face or yellow face i guess is the thing as well spray tan face. yeah yeah, spray no, tan. I used to show up to uh, those bodybuilding competitions and just fucking yell at people for being, a, even the black people, like, you're not black. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. <laughs> uh, is that right? Did I fuck that Pretty up? Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. If you haven't seen those videos, Jesse, of uh, the bodybuilders getting ready for competition, it is, it is the blackest makeup you can possibly imagine because they want yeah, to show no, it. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> it is, vein. like, really dark. It's ridiculous. Covered. Yeah, it's, it's nonsense. Uh, not that I wouldn't do it. I would do it as a joke, but apparently I'm too hairy. Like it won't stick to hairy skin. Hey, you have to wax yourself. Yeah. I'm not doing all that. Like I, 
I actually wake up. The first thing I do every morning when I wake up is tease out all of my body hair, all of it, mm -hmm. head to toe, tease it out, just so I could see what the links are. And then I have uh, my assistant measure the links of everything and yep. just keep it in a notebook for, for the future. You never know if, when that information is going to become important. You have a chest hair journal? Uh, it it's not just a chest hair journal. I mean, all of the hair is recorded in there, but yeah, there's a chest hair does that, part. I, I assume that hair just stays the same length after it hits like maximum length, right? Uh, it, I, that's a good question. I'd have to look in the notes. Is it forever growing like head hair? I'd have to look in my notes. Uh, I'll let you I, know. I think so. It's kind of like, you know, on a human, your ears and your nose never stop growing. I would imagine your chest hair is the <clears> same thing. Probably, yeah. I mean, my fucking beard hair doesn't stop. Why would, why would my body stop hair here but not here? I don't know. I agree. You know, I'm not I've, sure, but the thought of like your chest hair just growing forever and being long like your head hairs. How funny creepy. would that be if you had to go to a barber <laughs> like once every three months and get your body hair trimmed down? I mean, well, Greek people. There's know about a lot that. of waxing. Yeah, there's a lot of waxing going on. Like a, a lot of dudes get their chest waxed, uh, backs waxed, shoulders, neck, that type of that type of shit. So I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I was born without hair. You look like a pretty hairless guy yourself, Jesse. Is Not that the all. case? No. No, he's covered in hair. I'm Hungarian. I'm really hairy. Really? Yeah. I shaved so my face doesn't look hairy, but yeah, super Cause, hairy. Because right now through this Zoom, you would kind of look like Drew Brees. Yeah, I get that a lot. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, and Tony Hawk. If you look through the comments on my videos that are viral, like a third of them are calling me Tony Hawk, Aaron Rodgers, or Drew Brees. Hmm. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't think I look like those three people. I can, I can see Drew Brees. Uh, tell, me, tell me about your stance on standing or kneeling for the anthem because that will tell us whether or not you're Drew Brees. Or do we have a football? <laughs> can he throw a football? No? All right. Yeah, can I, I can throw yeah, a football. Yeah, so make but... some political statements. Yikes. I, uh... This guy's a fucking pussy, man. Come on. <laughs> no, sorry, alienate, guess... alienate half of your clientele. Let's do it. Come on. Oh, I have no problem doing that. I am... Um... So I don't really have a problem with the, uh, the kneeling for the flag. I have a, uh, I feel like being formal military that, uh, you kind of have this like freedom of expression, freedom mm. of, I think it is disrespectful, but I think you should be allowed to do it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, I don't think there's people that want football players like to be punished. And I think that, uh, football players should have the right to kneel for the anthem because that's the political statement they want to do. Mm. And it's, they're disrespecting the flag i think but it's because they feel that the country's disrespected them and then uh people that watch football and decide that they don't want to watch it anymore because this is going on that's also their right so you know it's you know like what's going on i i think all of that's fine and the the nfl is who's who's losing money off of it but um on the other side of it the nfl is its own you know like it it's their own business the team owners own the teams i think that they can reduce playing time or have players not on the, the team if they do that. But Well, you would think so until Colin Kaepernick wins an $80 million lawsuit against the NFL, right? Yeah, I think that was uh, – he was alleging like a coercion between the yep. the teams not to hire him. Yeah, but what does that mean? Like you can't uh, – one owner of a team isn't going to call another owner and say, you better not fucking hire this guy because what, what leverage do you have? There's no, no I, leverage there. I think it sounded like they did. They – uh there's like a lot of evidence that a lot of the owners spoke to each other. And oh, like I'm sure they colluded. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. They all colluded and yeah. decided like, you know, this, we're not hiring this guy. And then, uh, I mean, he brings a lot of baggage too. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of whatnot. I think that, uh, if he was a higher caliber player, he would have still got a job, which, you know, someone, it, your worth as much as, as what the team decides you're worth. Right. And, uh, if, if you're going to be winning your team's Super Bowls and they can kind of look past a lot mm -hmm. of stuff. And if you're not, they make an example out of you. And Kaepernick is a high tier backup, low tier starter and not worth the, uh, the drama that he brings along for, for these teams. What the fuck are we even talking about? How did we get on this subject? Uh, so what did you do in the military? The, uh, I was actually an admin. I hated my time in the military. You were a 42 alpha. Yeah, I was exactly Oof. a 42. I actually started as a I 42 Lima and then they you. went done with the thing. So uh, I, I joined as a split op when I was 17. What does that mean? Um, I did basic training between junior and oh, senior yeah, yeah, year yeah. of so college. Oh, yeah, yeah, So you were in delayed entry or, program and all yeah, that shit? Yeah, junior and senior year of uh, high school. And um, <clears throat> so at the time... What's that like? It's pretty cool because you get to go back your entire senior year of high school and like you're a fucking soldier and nobody else is. And so 
it's, it's like a whole were you slang were you slanging thing. dick that fucking senior year or what yeah, senior year was super different than junior year mm. it was, i was the man <laughs> all you high <laughs> schoolers that we so, have a lot of high schoolers that listen to this show make sure you go into the delayed entry program and then get a bunch of girls pregnant before you go uh, to ait and i uh, i made sure to like flaunt it wear tons of army t-shirts and keep mm. my hair high and tight and all that was, i was a shit bag yeah but, we, uh, <laughs> look we're all shit bags here come on and, uh, you know, considering I had done nothing but done basic training, but, um, no, I, I regret my time in the army, not because of the service thing, but just because of, uh, when I signed up, I, uh, my recruiter just hooked me on the, uh, the job that had the higher highest enlistment bonus. And for some reason they needed the like 42 Lima thing at the mm. time. What's a 42 Lima? Uh, 42 Lima was admin before 42 alpha. Was oh, I admin. see. It was admin plus finance, I think. Mm. And then they split them apart. And reclassed half of us to one thing and half to the other, but um, at seventeen it was like a twenty five thousand dollar enlistment bonus, and that's way more than I'd ever seen before. So that's a lot of like, money for a seventeen year old. Yeah, I was like fuck yeah, yeah I want twenty five grand. I'll uh, do a really boring job for eight years and get nothing substantial out of my time in the service. It's, uh, I yeah, that amount of money. Where, where were you? What unit were you in? Uh, it was in the out of the hundred and eighth division out of Charlotte. I don't even know what that is. is that reserve or something? Yeah, uh, it's, it's all TRADOC. It's not even ForceCom divisions. I thought all of TRADOC was at Bragg now, or is that ForceCom? ForceCom's at no, Bragg No, ForceCom's yeah, out yeah. of Bragg. Uh, TRADOC's, I think, a few different places. But uh, So everyone else is getting you know, deployed, and we just get mobilized to fucking Fort Knox. To do like Fort uh, Jackson. What do you call it? The pre-deployment bullshit? What is it called? Yeah, I was in the initial Fuck, reception battalion for Oof. like my entire fucking military career getting... Like the, getting people like off the bus when you first arrive to fucking Fort Jackson and uh, getting them their first set of PTs and uniforms and teaching them what at ease and attention is. And wow, that sounds like the worst thing I've ever heard yeah, in my it was, life. It was terrible. But my parents loved it because I was safe. I mean, there's no danger at all in, in doing that and it still pays for college. Yeah, but you need a little danger in life. That's why I recommend doing drugs, folks. Yeah. This is a public sure. service announcement. Yeah. Figure out which drugs they can't test for and do those drugs. Uh, you know, well, cocaine's a good one. It only stays in your system like a day. Seventy-two or two. hours, yeah, for regular use. Uh, Is that real? <laughs> yeah, you want to avoid things like weed and psilocybin because they're like, if you're a, a single user for marijuana, you're looking at a couple of days. If you use it more than once, you're looking more like, and it depends on your body fat as well because THC yeah, is fat soluble. THC, exactly. Um, but you want to you know your drugs. Good uh, stuff. Oh yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, um, yeah, cocaine is pretty brief. You can do that on a Friday and piss clean on a Monday, typically, if you drink a lot of water. Um, I think meth is the same way, but it's like no, super... No, amphetamines is long-term. Is it? Amphetamines, MDMA, psilocybin, which is mushrooms, uh, weed, they're all like anywhere between two weeks and 45 days, depending on how frequently you use them. Um, now, LSD, they don't even test for that. So, drip, drip, drip. <laughs> take that, take that LSD, folks. It's good for you. I started when I was 11 years old, and I'm great, uh, doing well. Super happy. I definitely don't want to jump out in front of a moving truck. Uh, let's. What are we doing here? We're doing some sponsors, uh, kids. Oh. You were asking before we came on the show if we actually use these sponsors and what they were yeah. they were doing around the the set. Jesse, I was. yes, we are. Uh, first and foremost is GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. Um, I've got a massive deal to report from ghostbed.com. I got an email about an hour ago from Rich Bernstein uh, over at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They are doing something special for our audience. They are giving anybody who is a member of the military, um, anybody who is a first responder, anyone who works for the government, and anyone who is a teacher, 30% off every single thing in the entire store. Um, that is their new deal that they are doing and it's incredible i'm assuming they're watching the news the same as the rest of us and uh seeing how fucked uh the, the country is because of covid and everything else shutting down um so they're giving 30 percent off uh, to all of those uh professions that i just named off of everything in the entire store that is separate from all their other deals uh everything else now is um you know for for regular folk um, I believe they're doing 20 or 25% off. If you do a mattress, you get uh, two free pillows. And as always, all of these deals are applicable. With the 36-month page, you go program no interest at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Go there today and get on damn deals. Thank you to Ghostbed for doing that. That's amazing. 
now that I see myself in this Zoom camera, I look like I have a sunburn. That I'm, I could be in the next sunburn porn, uh, which would be nice. Uh, I tell you what, I'm missing out here, D'Anthony. Some KillCliffCBD.com. Uh, don't have any of it on the road. Can't wait to get back and pick some up. Uh, since I'm moving from house to house, like I'm fucking Ghislaine Maxwell right now, um, I can't send it to my location quite yet here in Austin, yeah. Texas. But it's the best in the business. Three amazing flavors: mango, orange, Kush, and the greatest of all time. Uh, go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros will get you twenty percent off um, and uh, free shipping with that. And here's another one where you will not piss hot on a, on a drug test. There is no THC in this. Twenty five milligrams of CBD in every single can. It has become the summertime drink with vodka. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for 20% off and free shipping. Who do we got last, Anthony? I don't even know. When's this going up? It's going up tonight. Um, what day is it? It's going up live tonight. Uh, it's Wednesday. No, it's mm. not. It's Tuesday today. Let's see. Wait, today's... What? Why is my calendar all fucked up? Uh, why are you all fucked up? You just took one of the most massive hits of weed on camera that I've ever Give seen. Give me a break. So. Um, let's uh. see. <laughs> well, <laughs> ExpressVPN's up this week. Yeah, expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Protect your digital butthole. Everybody needs a VPN out there. Uh, expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros is where you can get yours. If you sign up now um, for an entire year, you get three months for free. It is only $7 a month. It will protect you from uh, people trying to hack your shit. Uh, and also everybody else is out of content. Um, on fucking Netflix, Hulu, everything else. This will allow you to tap into anybody's Netflixes and Hulu accounts in the entire world. If you go to their website, it'll tell you how to watch like fucking yeah. shit in in uh, England, India, uh, Canada, goes full India. on Bollywood, bro. That's I'm into it now. Ring, ding, 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 and all that fucking music, and then the crazy ass fight scenes they have. I get super high and laugh my ass off at that stuff. Same man. Uh, I, I watched a dude punch a zebra on one of those Bollywood films. Well, that zebra was asking for it. Uh, also, <laughs> I think so. uh, with uh, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news lately. I think we mentioned it uh, not too long ago, but uh, Google has announced that their Chrome incognito mode actually is kind of tracking some data. So if you're one of those people that are using incognito mode to look up fucked up shit on the internet, you might want to go ahead and get a VPN as well. I agree. I agree. So go to expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros today, uh, and that'll get you seven bucks a month and then three free months if you order for a year. Since we got a lawyer on the show, I want to talk about uh, the potential ban of TikTok right now. Um, is is there any? It is, yes. Like um, Trump so right has said now, he wants to ban TikTok domestically. I don't know for, how you do that. Is there? Well, a, I need a backstory here. So there, there, there is a, a precedent for it. Um, India has just banned TikTok. Hong Kong has banned TikTok. And then 10 other countries have also banned TikTok. Um, one of TikTok's top users was interviewed on TMZ yesterday. And he said, look, man, even though this is my living and this is what I'm you know, doing for a living, I think he said he was making about 17K a month off of his TikTok videos. He, even he said, man, there is something that is not trustworthy about the way Chinese because it's a Chinese app um, that they're stealing your data and uh, voice and uh, and all that shit uh, through TikTok. I, I can't remember the government banning an app yet. Um, There's also something in the terms of service of TikTok. This is a story like six months ago, but where when you publish media on there, they didn't they didn't have the like uh, lifetime licensing rights to that image and your image essentially mm -hmm. so they could use it for they could sell it to companies for marketing or any kind of other bullshit like that mm -hmm. essentially yeah they, uh, they banned the back page app that's true What's yeah back page dot net is where you used to go to get prostitutes let's not play fucking dumb here ross we all did it okay <laughs> fucking you know, piece of I shit never, no I never you did you page. did i was there never she was, heard of back page? she was really? super big uh, 300 roses on on Craigslist was my jam, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, I never. I've just I been posting pictures of uh, cabinets. <laughs> Can you believe that bullshit? Man, that Wayfair. I, shit I've is been out of control. I've been going down the rabbit hole on some of this stuff, and obviously some of it is hokey nonsense. But it's weird, like it's weird what Wayfair says about it. Like somebody posted a picture of a cabinet that cost twelve thousand dollars. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, it's because it's booking blah, blah, blah. Like, no, dude, there's no cabinet that's $12,000 ever. 
That's never existed. So give us some kind of explanation. Although if you go on eBay right now, you can find all sorts of weird shit. Even on Amazon, actually, that's like it would be like a, a fucking pen for ten thousand dollars. I'm sure it's money laundering for sure. Like that's yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's probably like kind of a digital version of the Lawa network where uh, terrorists move money around and shit like that. Uh, they've been using cryptocurrency to do that for years now. So so why would they use Amazon? That's what that's my question. Like even even for the Wayfair story, why use why use Wayfair. I mean, maybe you're hiding in plain sight in that regard. I don't know. Do I guess, but I, I, w- I would like somebody to order the $15,000 cabinet and, and see what it is and if, if the quality is there. Because the, the CEO of the company, this got so big that he had to come out and release a statement saying, look, this is the quality of the cabinet. And he goes, I don't think you're seeing how, how large it is and all that other shit. And I'm like, man, any cabinet I have to put together is not worth $15,000 fucking dollars. No, our whole set costs $15,000. Yeah, there's no uh, way so, that cabinet is like better than this. I mean, not that we're our set is awesome, but it's like big as shit. It's a whole fucking room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's pretty goddamn big, and it encompasses two different sets. I just don't see a cabinet being worth that much. Uh, the other part about this story is the way that the cabinets were named. They were all named differently after missing children. Yeah, that was weird. What? I don't. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if those uh, screenshots are legit or not, but I've seen them. Like. I haven't personally been on their website and seen that, but there's a there's a couple of posts out there where it shows the name of a missing young child and, and then, then selling a cabinet, then, then a listing. That. Like the one of them's name was Juliana or something like that, and it said like a cabinet was called Juliana and it was a cabinet for sale for like fifteen thousand dollars. That's fucking weird. But is it real or not? It's the internet, so who the fuck knows if that actually happened? I don't know if that was a manipulated screenshot or what. Do you think at the after it's all said and done, we're going to find out that the cabinets are made out of these missing people, and that's why they're <laughs> worth so much? No, I think uh, it's probably child sex trafficking. Yes, if so it's a, if it's anything, that's probably what it is. Like yeah. buy a cabinet, get a child. Well, I think the child comes in the cabinet, like Elian Gonzalez, but on a he was on a raft. Yeah, so you're actually getting a, a little Elian Gonzalez sent to you um, from Wayfair. Uh, I'm not sure what they're shipping process is like i would imagine it would have to have some ac in the back of that thing though probably dry ice or at least some air holes and a rebreather yeah because if i if i ordered one and, and the kid was dead upon arrival i'd be real pissed and yeah i don't know what the, re- the return policy is on that I, I it's probably not a return policy <laughs> considering it's a fucking crime against humanity but uh yeah that's i think uh somebody has suggested that we start hiding ourselves in these cabinets Mm-hmm. Uh, and just in full kit with a fucking rifle, and as soon as they pop the top on that thing, I I pop out and murder everybody in the goddamn room. Uh, from a uh, legal standpoint, great. where am I at there? Is it, we were talking about TikTok. Is this tying into TikTok? We uh, well, I mean, look, children in cabinets. I'm not sure if that's related. T- TikTok is mostly fucking children and and scantily clad children dancing. From what I can yeah. tell, is it? I'm, I'm yeah. not a TikTok person. I only see TikTok when people share their TikTok videos on like Facebook or yeah. other platforms, but it's it's a lot of cringy adults and a lot of over sexualized children, which is the internet, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, and a, and a lot of TikTok videos right now are children popping out of cabinets. Um, it's called the Wayfair Challenge. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> is that real? Go there. Are they really doing that? Because that would be fucking funny. No, but I there's mean, every everything's a challenge now. Oh yeah. My, my daughter, I think, looks at TikTok or stuff like TikTok. She's eight, and she's always talking about mm. this, like this challenge. Is, yeah, don't. It's a Pringles challenge. It's a, don't drink uh, as much water as you can. Challenge. Stay awake <laughs> for seventy-two hours. Challenge. Everything's a challenge. <laughs> Well, I've done. I've I've been awake for seventy two hours for sure. Hey, you won the challenge. You get nothing for winning. You just like, yeah. It's you, you. don't get anything for climbing Mount Everest either, right? Uh, except for a missing nose. That's yeah, true. Yeah, or fucking nose. frostbite and AIDS. Because you get, yeah. I think you get uh, raped about three quarters of the way up by no, an Eskimo. No one ever. Correct. No one ever says that. Well, there's no Eskimos in in the Himalayas. I don't think. No. <laughs> no. I, I heard their their Eskimo Eskimo population is growing. <laughs> I'll look into it. Don't worry about it. Um, that's what I like to do in my spare time. That and sunburn porn. Um, I like to see where Eskimos are migrating to. They're Nepalese, right? I'm Isn't... a huge fan. Jesse, hey, are you up. regretting your life's decisions right now by coming on this show? No, this is fantastic. <laughs> He's going to use this as an advertisement for his law firm. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm making tons of money right now. I bet, yeah. I, what, uh, what's the name of your firm? It's uh, I just work independently. Mm. It's not a firm. Okay. So, what, so is it just uh, jessebrightthelawyer.org? What is it? Yeah, no. that's def- it's jessebrightthelawyer.org, <laughs> you fucking yeah. dick. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What kind of law do you practice? Uh, so... Uh, mainly criminal defense. I've done some little uh, like landlord tenant here and there, mm. um, a little bit of property law. I've tried to help people out with a couple uh, contracts. Mm. Um, people will ask me to like send letters to them uh, or send letters to people on their behalf when they want something done. What and, if, uh, what if I just want you sounds. to what if I just want you to send random letters to people that have no legal basis whatsoever? How much do you want it like on my legal letterhead? Yes. I'm still sending like. 70. I don't care what it costs. Just tell me what it costs. Yeah, Seventy five dollars a letter. Oh fuck yeah, dude! Letter. Hey everybody, you're all fucked now because everyone is no. getting a letter from me. A C- you're all getting cease and desist, but I have no I, idea. What I will it's send out be. as many letters as you want at seventy five dollars a letter. I'll I'll spend the rest of my. What's your website so people can find you? Seventy five bucks to troll your friends. That's pretty good, folks. It's no website. I got a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. Let's probably look into a. Oh, you do. How how's how many subscribers do you have on YouTube? Like, uh, I don't, somewhere around like fifty thousand or so. Nice. Holy oh, shit! So you had a you had a new video come out recently that went viral. Right? Yeah, I had a video come out that uh, for the first time I got uh, one million views in a forty eight hour uh, time frame. It's like a it's like a benchmark to hit. Oh wow! That's, That's pretty good. A. Yeah. What was it? It's a. Uh, I went through a checkpoint and. Uh, Basically, just explained ahead of time how you have the right to be silent at a checkpoint so that they can't ask you questions to get you to incriminate yourself. And then I went through a checkpoint and ignored their questions and just sat there until they told me to go. And then uh, it, someone posted it on Reddit, and for some reason, like three million people wanted to see it in three days. I don't know. Okay, so hang, so hang on, uh, like a checkpoint? Are you talking about a DUI or, or like coming over the border from Max? No, like a DUI checkpoint. So that's part of the video is that uh, DUI checkpoints are. In consti- unconstitutional mm. in, in and of themselves. Uh, the police can't just set up a checkpoint and uh, and just breathalyze everybody that goes through. Um, yeah, it's a fourth, the only thing they can do. Situation, right? Yeah, it's exactly. It's a search and seizure issue. They um, what they can do is that uh, to drive on the roads, you're legally required to have a driver's license, so they can set up these. I mean, they're. They're set up license checkpoints. The only thing that they can do initially is ask for your license. You hand them your license. They go back to your car and make sure that your registration is good. And then they let you leave. Um, but the drivers know it's a DWI checkpoint. The public knows. The police knows. The courts knows. It just, it's not really. But the way that you circumvent that is by just not talking. So when you go through the checkpoint, they're looking for all kinds of stuff for you to incriminate yourself so that they can move it to the next step. They ask you where you're coming from, if you're coming from a bar or if you've been drinking or once you start talking, they can say that they smelled odor of alcohol on your breath, which is, yeah, sometimes is most of the time bogus. I don't know. I don't know about most of the time, but it's bogus a lot. Well, this is, but, an, um, so police you as an interrogation technique and it's not anything new. As a matter of fact, it, it, it predates modern policing by thousands of years, but, um, just being silent, right? If you're someone asking questions, I'll ask you a question like, "Where were you? Where are you at tonight?" And I let most people would answer like, "Oh, I was over here doing this." And then you just stay silent for another fifteen to twenty seconds, and they will tell you more information normally because people are uncomfortable with silence. Please use that all the time. It's just a basic. It's not like nefarious. This is a basic interrogation technique. But most people feel uncomfortable with it. So, like he's saying, right, if you silent. just sit there and be silent the whole time. It is going to feel uncomfortable for you, but technically there's not a whole lot they can do about it. No, it can't. As a matter of fact, there's nothing they can do about it. So in the video, I just hand them my license, and then they just start asking me questions. Where are you coming from? Can you hear me? But uh, do you have anything to drink tonight? Do you still live at this address? And like every single question that they ask is because if you answer it the wrong way, they can give you a ticket or something. And they're asking you, oh, do you still live in Raleigh? Or would you still live wherever that's on your license? Because if you don't, they can give you a ticket for... uh, not reporting that you changed dates or changed uh, your address on your license to DMV. And that, uh, but most of what they're looking for is anything so that they can say that they've got uh, a totality of the circumstances to, to put a breathalyzer in your face and make you get out of the car. But uh, so, uh, you know. Even, what, if, what if you're silent the whole time and the cop tells you to step out of the vehicle? Yeah, so if they give you a command, you should still listen to their commands. Um, it's tough for me to say based on 
just like a, an overall without being at each specific situation, which commands are going to be lawful and which mm-hmm. are not based on being lawful. But uh, once they give you a command, you should step out and, uh, and do what they tell you to do. But uh, you still don't have to talk. You can pretty <laughs> much only get yourself in trouble talking at a, at so a checkpoint. So did you not talk at all? When, when, did they ask you to step out of the vehicle? Or did they just no, they didn't ask me through? to step out of the vehicle. It just stayed uh, completely silent. Um, did you did you tell them, hey, this is my legal right to stay silent, therefore I'm not going to answer any of your questions? No, and that's always funny to me when people do that, and I'm like, you're talking to let them know that you're refusing to talk. This seems weird to me. You don't have to tell them that you're not going to talk. If uh, As soon as you talk to tell them that, they're going to say, I smell some odor of alcohol on your breath, you know, yeah. step out of the car, and now you're being taken downtown or into the bus to do the intoxilizer, and, and you lose your license for a year if you refuse that. It's, just don't talk so much easier it's it is really uncomfortable <clears throat> most of the comments on my video are people saying like i was so uncomfortable watching you just sit there and ignore him while he's asking you questions yeah well, how many is. questions do you think he went through uh, like three or four it wasn't a ton i've done this was the only one i recorded i've done countless checkpoints like that i've driven uber on the weekend for seven years so i've gone through every checkpoint that they set up in wilmington and i always just hand them my license and sit there and they ask me pretty much the same three or four questions and then just tell me to go. What are they so the audience knows? Yeah, so they'll ask you, uh, like, how are you doing tonight? And then where are you coming from? Have you had anything to drink? Uh, do you still live at this residence on your license? And then uh, have a good night. <laughs> uh, do you nod at all? Or so, do you say shake no. your head yes or no? No, I just stare at them. Man, that's weird. I'm yeah. surprised you, you haven't been pulled out of the car at that point. <laughs> no, I, I'm... I don't know, probably like 30 checkpoints probably over the last 10 years or whatever. I just stare at them. That's pretty funny. White, white privilege, Jesse. <clears throat> there it is. Um, That's So the other half of all the comments, besides telling me that I look like Aaron Rodgers or Drew Brees or whatever, or uh, telling me that they're uncomfortable as people being like, if you if you weren't white, you'd be dead doing this. So, I mean, I can't like turn myself into a person of color and go through a checkpoint. But Well, you can. It's just frowned yeah. upon. It yeah, yeah, really now. highly uh, frowned upon. Can you imagine getting going through uh, DWI checkpoints in blackface? In blackface, yeah, that uh, that would be the funniest yikes. thing I've ever seen in my life. I wouldn't film it for sure. Well, Do you, you remember that movie Soul Man? That was the closest um, <laughs> that anybody's looked to it. Uh, they did a really good job of makeup wise. To blackface, movie. yeah, we see Thomas Howell. <laughs> well, he was full black body. Uh, Tropic Thunder did it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, the <laughs> actor's name, but he went full black. You can't remember everything. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, name? Robert Downey Jr. There you go. It's Iron yeah. Man. That's why you've got three hundred thousand dollars in student loans right there because you can't remember Robert Downey Jr.'s name. <laughs> if you know C. Thomas Howell over Robert Downey Jr., we've got real problems in this world. Um, hey, wait, my YouTube channel, it's a uh, gosh. YouTube sl- the channel name is F I E R O six zero 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 six hundred. Um, you should probably look into changing the name of your YouTube channel. It's. I think it's set from like when you first. You can change the display name. Oh, so the, the display name at the top is changed. It says like Jesse the. It says like Jesse Bright Uber lawyer has me in a canoe. The canoe picture is kind of funny too. But. Let's see. Kayak, whatever it is. Why were you in a kayak? Are you a big <laughs> kayaker? <laughs> no. Yeah. Um. My. My uh, fiance used to live behind Gold's Gym, and in the last hurricane, the entire Gold's Gym flooded. So I kayaked in their parking lot. It was like several feet deep, but I kayaked around in the uh, flooded Gold's Gym parking lot all of after the uh, hurricane flow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Get, yeah, Florence. Flow, so you were whatever. doing Uber in a kayak then? I would pick people up in a kayak if they wanted. Let's to. start doing that. I'm a pretty, yeah, let's do it. I wouldn't call myself an avid kayaker, but I think I'm pretty talented. I don't think anybody should ever call themselves an avid anything because that's a little retarded. Let's be real. A yacker. A a yacker. I'm an uh, an avid fucking... I hate the word foodie, by the way. I know a lot of comedians have talked about this in the past. Is it because everyone eats? No, yes. And enjoys food? Like, what are you, a fucking breathy dude because you like oxygen, (laughs) you piece of shit? I don't remember which comedian said that, but it's really funny. I hate that word, foodie. I'm a a foodie. Oh, Anybody who's an avid kayaker is a yacker. So, um, is that a term? On- yacker? I know. Yeah. What does that yeah, mean? Pro- probably a, if anybody who avidly kayaks. Let's do an exercise right quick. Let's come up with some pun names for yaks. Like if you had 50 yaks just got delivered to your house, what would you name them? 
the yaks themselves or are, are you abbreviating kayak the yak themselves like an actual animal oh boy like I, yaki, would you yaki chan if a yak was here would you be like yeah that's a fucking yak would you know that that's a this guy doesn't yeah, know what a I fucking yak looks like. I, I would know what a yak looks like. What did like. you even I, learn in school, dude? Fucking not yaks, for sure, not covered in law school. <laughs> we, gotta, I, we have to do 50. something about the law schools in this country. What, is a, what does a yak look like? I'm, uh, it looks, oh, it's, it's, a, it's not even like it's a, a deer. animal, is it? They have yaks it's like a woolly it? mammoth. It's like a woolly mammoth. It's uh, not extinct? It's uh, fucking real. very, it looks like a, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Buffalo, bison, something like that. But it's got... It's kind of like a mix between that and a cow, and it has longer hair. But I don't know what genus it's from or anything like that. I just know what a yak looks like. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> look, look into that's it. not important. Yeah. Puns yeah. on the word yak are what we're talking about right here. So, so what I would, I would name, like if 50 showed at my house, I would call it Yakganistan. Um, yep. And that would be the area that it lives in. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, for those about to yak, I would, mm -hmm. I would definitely do that. Yep. Yaki Chan. Yaki Chan is a big one. Uh, Yak the Ripper, if, mm -hmm. if one murdered another one. Well, they're going to murder. Yeah. Because we all murder yeah. one way or another. Whether you're, mur murder. whether you're murdering out pearls on your stomach or shooting somebody in the back of the head when you're in a drive through either way, you're murdering. It's all the same. Yeah. It's all the same. Life uh, begins at ejaculation. That's my fucking stance. <laughs> and hopefully it ends at that. It'd be great to go out that way as yeah. well. Uh, at this point in the show, we get to the Drinking Bro of the Week. Um, this one was submitted by Ken Schrock from Oregon. That's a, sh that's a strong name. For those about to Schrock, there's a pun for you. Uh, from Oregon, he's been a member of Drinking Bros for three years. He is nominating Matt Pierce. Um, he says, Matt was murdered five years ago on the 15th of July. He was trying to help a friend out of a bad situation uh, and was killed for his troubles. The guy that killed him off uh, got off with a second-degree manslaughter charge, even though he shot him seven times in the chest and another two in the back of the head. That asshole only got a seven-and-a-half-year jail sentence. Matt was a great friend, battle buddy, uncle to my kids, and he was always willing to give the shirt off his back. He can't be replaced. Uh, cheers. Cheers. That's a crazy story. Again, we read all of these live on air, so we yeah. never get a chance to see them before. But uh, I definitely wouldn't have, have given uh, some yak puns before that story. No, um, but uh, justice is justice for all, right? And yeah. justice for all. Metallica wrote a whole fucking album about it. That's a joke, but like, justice only is real if it exists for all people. That includes Correct. fucking poor minorities in inner cities, but it also includes cops and, and fucking veterans and just regular fucking people that get swept up in the madness. You know what I mean? Let's get some justice for all the fucking children and teenagers that were killed over the weekend by fucking drug dealers as well. I'm not saying let's not get justice for fucked up cop bullshit, but let's do both because this is America. We can do both. Yeah, and let's uh, get some justice for those kids at Wayfair right now. Um, Something you know. weird is going on. But I mean, we're we're just super. I think we're super sensitive to yeah. sex trafficking right now because it's on everybody's minds. Um, but that's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? No, no, not at all. This was uh, this is definitely a weird fucking show today. Yeah, this guy um, wouldn't stop talking about yaks. I mean, what the fuck? Yeah, we... I don't think that's a real animal. Uh, Jesse, it is. Are you? Is that what you're doing? Is looking that up on the phone right now? It's 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 just Y A K. No, I was just you know? uh, sharing the uh, the link for the show. <laughs> Oh, well, now, now it's ending. Now it's ending, Jesse. So, um, you know, you can share it later. You can share it with your friends and family. I'm sure they're going to be real wait, proud wait. of everything that was said here today. We talked about yaks. We talked about sunburn porn. Yeah, make sure your um, kids see this. And do we say anything about Casey Anthony in this show? Well, you just did. There we go. So I think all the bases were covered. Surprisingly, we did not make an O.J. Simpson Bronco joke today, but uh, I did that on another show. Look, so, um, I mean, so. until I, I'm not going to fucking put a hundred dollar down payment on a truck that I won't see until next year. I look, I'm going to get one for sure. We all know that, mm -hmm. right? Does anybody yeah. not think I'm getting a fucking Bronco? Come on, man. <laughs> it's going to happen, but you don't need to do all this stuff. You just maybe basically, do, maybe you don't. No, did you don't. Did you have a Bronco previous one? No, but I'm a big OJ Simpson fan. Not really football, but after. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, his movie career was very good. Oh, no, not that. Oh, his murdering skills. Yeah, well, 
Allegedly. Allegedly, obviously. Yeah. He's still out there looking for the real killer. Yeah. Um, I wonder if he's going to get a free one. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> If they, I mean, they originally, obviously, they have some sense of irony over there because the original release date was his fucking birthday. Was that yeah. yes. OJ's release date? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did yeah, people yeah. not remember that? Like, that was a thing that the fucking marketing team over there thought, like, hey, that's a good idea. That's an idea that I would have. And if you're in a real marketing team, don't do the shit that I would do because that doesn't make sense. Yeah. We, not get, at all. we get paid to talk about buttholes for a living. We can't, you can't use my advice on stuff like that. Come on. Definitely cannot. You definitely cannot. Uh, Jesse, thanks for being on the show today. Yeah, man. absolutely. Tell, Had tell a great time. Where they can find you on social media and uh, YouTube. Yeah, so just uh, my YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com slash Piero 600. Um, it sounds like I'll have a website up soon. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's how to find me. Um, what does Piero 600 stand for? Is that like your anime? Porn I, don't, anime? I don't know. It's um, <laughs> so. That was my name on, you remember AIM, Instant Messenger? Yeah. So uh, I made an AIM in like middle school and that was the name that it like automatically generated for me and I just kept it for like three decades. Why not? Sure, sure. Uh, made it everything. Last, last question, you ever, <laughs> you ever gotten off to anime porn? No, not really my thing. Um, I like real humans, but yeah. Okay. usually yeah. like adult female yeah. The adult part is important. Know. The other part, we don't need to. <laughs> we don't really need to know about your fucking sexual <laughs> proclivities, guy. Uh, but if you want to talk offline about it, we'll do that. Yeah, of course. Of course I got you. We, <laughs> we got to finish the cocaine, anyways. So. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, it's never really finished. Can you imagine? Like, if you if you were able to come up with a spell, like a magic spell that did two things one it made cocaine infinite in this bag that you have and also it made sure that you never die from cocaine mm -hmm. what would you pick like what would the standard be over that that you would fucking say no like I, I want all the money in the world all the money in the world can't buy me infinite cocaine and the ability to do it without dying there's no amount of money that could do that you would need yeah. to also be able to do that while maintaining an erection uh, well, we've got Roman ED, my man. Destroy. Don't worry about that. Yeah. We have we have Roman ED as a sponsor. We'll Go just, to getroman.com forward slash drinking bros today. Free <laughs> yeah. shipping, free doctor visit. Like if I can't pills, if I man. can't die from cocaine, I'm not going to die from boner pills. So I'll take both. Yeah, take them both. At okay. The same time. Yeah, you I just guess be if, like coke. You could out. also add. But if if we're making wishes, would you really want to just take extra pills? It'd be easier to just be like, and it doesn't ruin your erection. Well, I mean, look, I set up the rules at the first part. I don't want to go changing the rules every time. <laughs> you're a lawyer. You know that, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're moving the, the goalposts at this all point. Right. Just tell me the rules, and I'll make sure that we just kind of, like, stretch them and get in all the gray areas. Yeah. Uh, Alec, right. I'm looking at the notes on YouTube for the show. You don't mention anything about yaks or porn. What, uh, what's the problem? Yep. Probably yeah. need to add those as keywords. Oh, he's in the uh, other room. Yak porn. Yak porn. Uh, thanks for being on, Jesse. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Jesse Bright. Thank you, guys. Anthony D'Anthony Holloway. I am Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>